Welcome to the fourth and last take-home assessment exercise. Uh, our project today will be on chapter six, which is pipe flow analysis energetics. And in this take-home project, we are going to look at the analysis and design um, of the performance of a hydropower uh, system, um, a water turbine that generates power. Um, so in chapter six, we have looked at uh, piping systems, including uh, major friction losses um, that are associated with uh, pipe, straight pipe of length L and diameter D and uh, fluid of viscosity around mu. And uh, also with minor pipe losses, which are associated with fittings such as valves and um, bends and elbows and so on and um, entrances and exit um, regions in the flow. And this is all part of the energy equation and in the energy equation we have the friction head loss and the friction head loss, the total friction head loss in a system like this where your uh, inlet is somewhere here and this would be your outlet for a single inlet, single, in, sing, single outlet energy equation. Um, you would have a total head loss associated with the straight pipe, the major losses as well as with the pipe fittings or which we call the minor losses and um, these are computed as the dynamic head multiplied by the Moody friction factor or the Darcy friction factor from the Moody chart. And here you have the pipe fitting um, friction loss uh, factor or friction loss coefficient that you get from the specific um, from the specific plot by the manufacturer of this particular uh, pipe fitting, such as a valve and so on. And we will see a couple of those in this in this. Um, video. So moving on, what is our product? Um, and that is your energy equation. So what is our product? We want to analyze um, a water turbine and the water turbine system uh, we talk of uh, today is um, involves a water reservoir that has um, an infinitely large surface area. So it's level doesn't drop uh, with time so uh, to make life easy uh, so you have a water reservoir and a piping system of a constant diameter and then you have a turbine and then the turbine opens onto a pipe diameter of a different size than the first one and then it opens to the atmosphere so this is similar to the previous uh, example that we have seen in the previous slide you have um, your energy system would probably have this as your, you'd have the free surface as your um, inlet, you would have uh, the outlet of the pipe right here as your outlet that opens to the atmosphere and the flow leaves at a certain velocity v. And the numbers that you see here are associated with the different, um, the different losses uh, friction head loss sources in this um, in this system. Um, so as we said, we have pipe of diameter uh, uh, D two. So this is D two, and the outlet pipe is larger. So this would be D one, and the ratio D one over D two is two and a half. So the the what you have after the turbine is the pipe coming out of the turbine is larger than the pipe coming into the turbine by a factor of 2.5 in diameter uh, so let's go over uh, the items that we have we have um, uh, losses associated with the exit uh, opening right here um, and it's a beveled opening then um, you have a bev uh, you have a butterfly valve, and for the design stage, we want to just consider the case of eighty degree valve opening, so it's almost open, fully almost fully open. Uh, then we have um, number three, 
which is here, is your pipe of diameter D1. And it has a length of 8 meters. Then you have your turbine. That's item number 4. And it has a power P. And we will talk about the power. It's not... Um, the power is given in, in the next slide. So we'll mention that a second later. Uh, then you have... Uh, the pipe of diameter D2 and it has a length of 36.8 meters um, followed by a pipe bend, another pipe bend and another um, metallic elbow and here you have a re-entrant uh, inlet with L over D and T over D thickness over a diameter of 0 0.3 so what are these numbers that we're talking about? R over D, pipe bend. These are associated with each one of those fittings that you would need to be able to get the minor loss associate the minor loss coefficient associated with each uh, with each one of those fittings, including the reentrant inlet. And all these are in your uh, book, which is uh, Frank White uh, Fluid Mechanics by uh, McGraw Hill. Uh, so that's our textbook um, during the semester. So the power P we will come to it in a second. So uh, as you have seen on Moodle, you, your team is supposed to select which power you want to work with. So you only need to select one power to work with. So if you selected a power of 20 kilowatts, uh, you have a choice on Moodle to um, select that, then you should stick with it. Don't work with another power. So your answers uh, for this pro for this take-home project will depend on which power you're going to work with. And we have four different powers. So um, each eight of us or eight teams of us will be um, uh, will be working with a different power level which means the problem uh, particulars will be different. Uh, so make sure you uh, select and know what your power is before you get going on your, um, on your solution methodology so that you don't have to repeat your work at the end. So what is this project involved in? What, what do we want to do uh, in this take-home project. We want to do two things. We want to design the system um, and we want to take one aspect of the design. So at the design stage, we want to size the diameters D1 and D2. What size should they be? Uh, should they be five centimeter diameter or 50 centimeter diameter? So that's the first uh, portion uh, or the first phase of this project. Now that we have sized the system and we said that the diameter D1 is, after our energy analysis, the diameter is, I don't know, uh, 5 centimeters or 50 centimeters, then we can move on and try and understand how the system behaves, the system performance, that is, the power um, production by the turbine. What is the actual power production by the turbine? Uh, um, based on uh, different uh, system parameters, particularly or especially the um, valve opening over here. So, so these are the two objectives in our uh, project. One is we want, at the design stage, we want to size the system. So that's, a, that's what engineers do. Uh, or one of the things that engineers do is to um, do sizing, to, um, to design things, um, get the geometry right. Uh, and for that, we are going to assume a new commercial uh, steel piping. And if you go to your chapter six uh, in the book, you will see that this is associated with a certain roughness um, of the pipe system that you will uh, be using. So stick with that. And um, so we're going to do this type of analysis and this hopefully will, um, we will converge on a solution on a size uh, for the piping system that will give us the desired 
power uh, that we have uh, selected to work with. And now that we are confident and we're happy and about our uh, sizing of our system and we check the answer and we get the right answer, now we want to move further on and now we have our system in operation and we want to try and analyze how the system will behave based on different parameters. So, um, and this is typically uh, for the longer run. Uh, during the design stage, you're trying to get an estimate of how much power you're going to get. What is the cost of your system? So the, um, the pipe size will decide um, will decide how much flow rate is going to go through and it will decide um, what is the cost of the material. So the basic uh, from a zero order type of analysis, the mass of the pipes, the weight of the pipe will somehow give you a clue on what the, um, what the cost of the initial installa installation of the system is going to be. So we want to um, uh, to analyze that uh, also. Uh, that's involved in the design stage. We want to size the system and we want to get some cost estimate. Um, then we want to do an operational stage analysis. So now our uh, system has rusted after one or two or three years of operation. Uh, it's become um, uh, it's become a system, a new, a used, a used system. Uh, so we want to assume that our pipes are now rusted steel. There are no more com new commercial steel piping. They're still uh, commercial steel, but they are rusted. So they will have a different level of um, um, of pipe roughness, and eventually, or consequently, um, friction head loss. So we want to factor that into our calculations we want to see what power are we getting sure we designed it for 40 kilowatts but are we going to get 40 kilowatts what if we close this valve by when it's fully open at 90 degrees we make it now partially open maybe 80 or 75 degrees are we still going to get 40 kilowatts or are we going to get uh, 30 kilowatts instead so that's the operational stage um, for analysis of the system so let's look at the design stage and our strategy um, that we want to follow for uh, getting the system parameters. So here is an example that I've worked out. So let's start with a power of one megawatt. So it's not one of those four values that you have used, but just a demonstration. And we have two, the two, we have the pipe diameter unknown. So, and we also don't know what our flow rate is going to be. So, this is different than the slightly different than the problems that we have worked out uh, during the lectures or the recorded lectures. So we need to um, come up with a strategy to um, to get those. It's not a straightforward kind of of solution with it all. So we want some starting point, and this is a rough starting point. So here we're just doing back of the envelope calculation. We want to know where to start. Should we start with a pipe diameter of 10 centimeter or 100 centimeter or one centimeter? Um, so we will start. So let's just do some rough back of the envelope calculations, and these are just. Um, picking them out of thin air. So we have uh, Z1 and Z2, the, the difference in, in, in height in the gravitational stored energy is 23.5 meters. So let's say 20 meters. Now those 20 meters, I'm going to say, so those 20 meters of, um, uh, of specific energy, so, um, energy per unit mass. Um, so that specific energy is going to, go, some of that energy, the 23 meters, it's, it's a form of energy, um, some of it is going to go to friction. Uh, some of it is going to leave as kinetic energy from the pipe outlet, and some of it is going to leave the system as uh, turbine uh, power, W dot turbine, or here we called it the turbine power P. So let's just, out of the blues, out of thin air, I'm just going to make the assumption that um, the turbine is 
probably going to be somehow we we have a good design of the system maybe that the turbine will be able to recover 50 percent of the stored energy so 50 percent of the 20 meters we're probably going to get 10 meters of turbine head and i'm going to assume that um 10 percent of that 20 meters that 20 meter specific energy uh specific head is going to uh, be lost be going out from our system as kinetic energy just the mass times velocity uh, is a kinetic is um is momentum and then you have kinetic energy half mv squared or half m dot um uh, v squared so is that true so energy rate so you get the idea so we'll have 10 percent so we're left left with 40 percent in in friction uh, so these are just out of the blues numbers and let's work with them just we want to we want to see where we're going to be we want to just get a rough estimate of where our starting point will be uh, as we said this is not the solution this is just back of the envelope uh, guesstimate of what we're going to do. so let's start with this 10 percent kinetic energy uh, it could be completely off and we will find out later but uh, so 10 percent of the 20 meters that's two meters and if we use some type of Bernoulli, a velocity of 2gh, uh, Bernoulli velocity, you know, the experiment number two that you, that you had, we're going to get some sort of maybe 16, 6 meters per second coming out of, my, um, of the um, turbine system outlet um, right here. Then, uh, and we said we have a good turbine system design including the piping and everything so 50 percent of this 20 meters that's 10 meters is going to go as um, turbine head so uh, the turbine head is just uh, this guy when you multiply it by rho g of the water and the volumetric flow rate uh, that's a megawatt uh, so let's see the rho g of the water um, so one megawatt is 10 to the six watts rho g of the water rho is thousand g is almost 10 so that's 10 to the four and then we have h turbine as we have said 50 percent of the 20 that's 10 meters so that gives me an estimate of the q so i'm probably gonna start with a q of 10 meters q per second and now that i have a q and i have a velocity some other way uh, that we have talked about a Bernoulli way um i will get so 10 over 6 let's just make it 5 10 over 5 that's going to give me an area of the pipe that should be uh two meter uh squared um which gives me a diameter of a meter and a half so that's a great starting point my my starting point is i have a diameter of one and a half meter and probably a volumetric flow and a volumetric flow rate of 10 meters cubed per second and here i'm going now to uh, get a little bit more specific and more accurate about my calculations i did now i'm going to involve my energy equation in a more um, orthodox way rather than pulling numbers out of thin air that's this distribution 50 40 and 10 percent so sure they sum up to 100 percent but maybe the ratios are probably off by i don't know we'll see by a lot by a little so we'll figure that out the next step so this is our starting point at least it's, it got us here uh, and then we want to refine this that's just um back of the envelope calculations um, now that I have Q and D, now I can estimate, have a good estimate of the friction, um, friction head loss. And the friction head loss has two components. It has the uh, major losses that are associated with the pipe of length L and diameter D. And remember, we have two pipes and it's associated with the minor losses that are the valves and the elbows and the bends and the entry and the exit of the system. Um, so, so I went to the Moody chart and I went to the fitting 
pipe fitting shards. So here you have a K versus um, whatever parameter um, that we have given before, the L over D, the radius of the radius of the pipe divided by the radius of the curvature. Um, so each plot is designed in its in its specific ways. Uh, so I went to those and went to the Moody chart and used this um, volumetric flow rate and diameter. So I got an estimate of Reynolds number for a new pipe. Um, so I had my epsilon over d. I was able to get some some good estimate, not exact, but um, a good estimate. Uh, still rough. Um, so um, I found my friction head loss to be approximately uh, 3.2 meters. So it took me, um, so there's a lot of space in between those two lines that um, got me to this 3.2 meters. And that's the point behind this project is that you you need to do this. And then uh, from this Q and D, I get a velocity V squared over 2G is uh, this guy. So um, here is, uh, right. So that's your energy equation. The turbine head is equal to the total head stored through gravity minus the dynamic head that leaves the system minus the friction head um, uh, that's consumed by the piping and uh, minor losses too. Uh, so the total energy is 23. You lose the um, V square over 2G, that's 1.3 meter. And as I said, it took me a while to go to get the 3.2 meters. So I'm left with a turbine head of 20 meters. That's way better than what we have guessed in, at the beginning that uh, of um, uh, of 10 meter turbine head, the 50%. Uh, so here I have a, I can now compute the power based on those parameters, a power of rho GHFQ, and I get two megawatts. So it's much larger than the one megawatt that we are designing for. So I have, my initial guess was oversized. Um, so my pipe diameter, which decides everything, uh, is slightly oversized. So I'm now I'm going to take it down, refine my pipe diameter, so you see where we're going. So let me take it 1.3, 1.4, we'll see how it goes. I might go a few iterations here. But you get the idea, you have a pipe diameter of 1.3, so the next step is to write your energy equation. And here I spell out the energy equation, the delta Z is 23.5. Uh, then you have your turbine head. Now I have the exact turbine head. I'm going to stick it in here. Um, and here is my pipe diameter, the 1.3. And then I have two pipes, pipe 1 and uh, pipe 2. So pipe 1 has a velocity V1 going through it, and pipe 2 has a velocity V2 um, going uh, through it. So I might have mixed up V1 and V2 here. And then plus the major losses associated with uh, section one of my system and the friction losses asso associated with section two, which involve the pipe of length eight meters, the valve and the, um, the exit. So the K minor one and K minor two, as well as the FL over D one and FL, FL over, D, um, over D two. Um, so this is the kinetic energy, so um, that's what's leaving here. As I said, I, must ha I might have messed up the, the nomenclature V1 and V2, but you get the idea. So here you solve for V1 and V2, and we know the ratio between the diameters D1 and D2, so you can get rid of either V1 or V2, um, because the diameter ratio is 2.5. Uh, so you get an equation, a cubic equation. So here you have a V, velocity V, and here you have a velocity V squared. So this equation is actually cubic in uh, velocity. Uh, so you solve this equation, um, uh, this cubic equation uh, in the velocity. So you're going to get three solutions. Um, 
hopefully at least one of them is going to be a reasonable one but you might get more than one reasonable solution so i would like you to discuss and uh, justify um, based on scientific evidence why you have picked that one and rejected the other solution and what might the consequences of your decision um, so you're going to get solution one solution two and solution three that all satisfy maybe one of them maybe two of them will not be physical they will satisfy your uh, energy equation that is they they satisfy the first law of thermodynamic dynamics and um, so you're not creating energy or losing energy but some of them might violate some other common sense uh, arguments so now you have your um, your velocity and you now get get the idea so you keep iterating until your your turbine power um, matches the uh, so the diameter that you get with the turbine power will give you the exact uh, Q so you you end up with um, converging on the diameter uh, of the pipe and the flow rate that you need to you to use at this particular um, uh, for these particular design conditions uh, the valve opening I think we said 80 degrees and so on uh, and you have converged on the design of the system great so now we have designed the system we found that our diameter we started with one and a half meter maybe is 1.35 meter in diameter which gives us an, op an operational flow rate or a design sorry a design flow rate of I don't know uh, maybe 1.5 meters cubed per second I'm just uh, pulling off these numbers based on the previous iterations uh, they are not final numbers so that's why I left them empty here uh, so based on the design diameter and design flow rate I'm going to get a 1 megawatt um, power out of this turbine so great now that i have a system uh, size now i can com compute its cost so you can google this guy um, this guy up this report um, and uh, from the university of new mexico and they have a table and a graph that gives you the cost per foot I believe this is per meter or per foot. So if you look this report up, it will give you the exact. Um, I'll, I'll actually post the link down in the description of uh, this video. So you look up this report and you'll see that the cost of the pipe uh, has this type of, let's say, a steel pipe have this type of relationship with the pipe diameter. So you'll see, uh, I'm assuming it's going to be cubic because the cost goes with mass mass goes with l cubed um, so this is probably a cubic type of um, relationship uh, but here let's see in this case they have an exponential type of relationship whatever it works okay um, so uh, that's your pipe diameter with um, so with cost per unit length so we'll see whether this is per foot or per meter it's probably per meter so we can get the system um, we can get the um, the system uh, cost in terms of piping um, and for the pipe fittings um, I don't you want to google those uh, I don't so you can go to amazon.com and get an estimate of for a 1.5 meter diameter, a 90 degree elbow, you can get a cost. So we want to get the piping, including the fitting costs. Then the turbine cost, I'm going to, uh, I've done some, some research and we want to use that same graph, except we want to scale it up for our system. So, I fa so you want to, um, to ground, this figure based on this turbine so this 500 watt turbine uh, that has a 2.5 inch opening uh, right here so i guesstimated uh, this opening here from the graph to be almost two and a half inch uh, and gives you 500 watts it costs, it costs about a thousand dollars 
so you will change uh, this guy over here, uh, this scale over here, uh, and this scale over here while still while still using the same relationship. So for um, a two um, for five hundred watts, so you can change the pi diameter an inch, um, change it to uh, power of the turbine, and change the cost per unit length just the cost of the turbine, um, initial cost of the turbine. And the point that we have for the power of the turbine of, uh, here I have 500 watts, right? So you want to get this relationship, a uh, similar relationship, that, but you want to change this factor, the 10.28, and the, um, whatever, the e to the 0.5, um, so here I have 500 watts, so this will ground you, and here I have um, $500. So it's a very, very rough type of estimate. And if I try and extrapolate it to 500 or um, 50,000 watts, or a million watts, as in the example before, I'm probably gonna get a $50,000 type, I'm not sure exactly, but you get the point, uh, type, um, cost for the turbine. So we want to do a cost analysis for, for this type of system, including the, uh, the piping, the fittings, as well as the, as the turbine. And then, that's part A of our project, is the design stage. And we now have some rough estimate of how much it's going to uh, cost. Then we want to do now f uh, fast forward three years uh, in time after installation, at after t equals zero. And um, now let's. This is the this is the knob that the uh, plant operator is going to play with. That's the valve opening. The plant operator will. Um, we'll be able to control how much flow rate is going to go through the system by opening and closing this valve number two, as we have described it before. Uh, and each valve opening um, here in degrees is associated with a certain friction um, uh, frictional loss. So as you can see, if when it's fully open, the friction associated with it is very small, so it doesn't hinder the flow. As you close it to 50 degrees, you're going to get a huge uh, loss in our uh, huge pi frictional loss, which means that your flow is going to significantly drop. So we want to know how does my system performance, how, my, how, how is my turbine power going to be affected by how I open uh, this particular valve. So um, now you fix your D, we already have found D from our design stage. We built the system, the system is working, and now um, we're imagining what's going to happen three years or five years down the road uh, from installing this system. Um, and we want now to see, we design, when we designed it, we said it's going to be a megawatt, uh, but for your particular project, it could be 100 kilowatt or maybe 20 kilowatt, depending on which one you select. Um, but am I going to get the one megawatt when I'm when I have it, uh, my pipe to be rusted and my valve opening to be 90 degrees uh, or 70 degrees? Probably not. And that's what we want to do. So we want to do the energy analysis just using the first law of thermodynamics, just we have just like we have done before. And um, we want to plot the turbine power, how much turbine power is produced for each one of those valve openings. So one, two, three, four, five. So you need at least five points to have some, some decent trend setting in your graph. Uh, three points, two points can get you a line, um, but you need way more than that to get some, some reasonable um visualization of your trends and so on so that's why we picked five points but please be my guest if you decide because you're doing this on excel it will be automated um if you use the points um that's that's definitely going to be for your own credit if you fill up the points with let's say 85 75 65 50 and maybe going down 
but I can I don't know why an operator will go down uh, that much and still operate it. But you can still go and see extreme system operation, 50, 45, 40 degrees. So be my guest. You're encouraged to do this. It's to your own credit um, to go beyond what we have, um, what I've set for you over here. So I want to plot the the product produce turbine power uh, with valve opening. We're going to make the assumption that the turbine is 100% efficient. We're not really going to worry about that at the current point. Um, and then um, we also want to know what is the flow rate that, because it's part of your solution, you need, you'll get the flow rate and you'll get the power. So this is really um, in the same step you're going to get it. But we really want to know how much flow rate is going to flow for each valve opening. And eventually, this is the plot that the fluid mechanics plot we're interested in. What is the power production versus meter cubed of um, flow rate per hour and so on uh, that I'm going to get? Uh, so these are the three primary performance uh, plots that I would like you um, uh, to plot. And when you're solving your energy equation, as you see, uh, you're, you're going to get a cubic equation in the velocity V. So you're going to get more than one solution, so up to three. Um, hopefully one of them is going to be physical. Uh, in terms of power. So if you close your valve too much, you might end up with negative turbine power, which means the system um, will not produce any power. It has to, this has to be a pump for, for the system to work as, as designed. And that's when you don't really, um, that would be the point where you, there's no point in you going below, uh, below this value of pipe opening, uh, sorry, valve opening. So that's our, per so we have now sized the system um, based on some power requirements. We have found some estimate of the cost and now we have estimated um, some performance characteristics of the system five years down the road when the pipes are rusted and the operator is in the system and they are varying the um, varying the valve opening and so on and the flow rate um, so again I'm going to repeat this you only need to work with one of those you uh, you have selected it on Moodle so you have that um, uh, that link on Moodle to select your pipe power uh, your turbine power so only select one if you select 80 kilowatts stick with it because your answers are going to be different uh, than the people who selected the 20 kilowatts and your project. So make sure that your project is based on what you have selected on Moodle in terms of this power. And then what do you, what do I want from you for in your analysis of this system? I want a report and I also want to see your detailed um, numbers in the Excel sheet. So I would highly advise you to make an Excel sheet where you only change the velocity V and the solution will just jump right at at you because you'll have all those k's in your excel sheet and the hf's and the v's so it'll make your life easier so i would advise you to invest in creating a good excel sheet uh, a very detailed excel sheet with 10 20 columns um, and all you need is just vary one of those cells uh, and somehow maybe at some point you really need to update the k based on the reynolds number but that these variations are on the and the friction factor F based on the Reynolds number, but these will not be um, huge. So you want to also um, uh, adjust those numbers too. But then it'll be varying two or three numbers, and then your calculations are automatic in there. So I would I want to see a report, and in the report I would like um, I would like not a, so that's for what I'm talking about here, your Excel sheet. So every time you do uh, one design stage calculation, you create a new Excel um, workbook or, or an, on an extra sheet. So label it, this is step number one is in the design stage, step number two in the design stage. So this is your appendix, sort of, and step number three in the design stage. And final 
uh, or converge design stage Excel sheet. Um, uh, so that's in the Excel sheets. But in the report, I would like you to show me some sample calculations on, on how you do it, and also in words. Uh, so this is what we got in the first iteration. Then we cha then we found the D to be so on. So I would like you a summary of your results and a discussion of the results rather than just the calculations, just simple calculations, simple equations. And then I would like you to discuss in your report a section called cost estimation of your system um, uh, based on what we have talked about before, the um, piping system cost and the um, the pipe system cost and the turbine system uh, the the turbine component cost um, so that's for the design stage I also want to see the same for the uh, performance stage calculations I want to see sample calculations uh, for for uh, detailed sample calculations for only one opening of the pipe and you justify and tell me in words uh, why you have done this and then you can summarize you don't really need to show me the whole excel i don't actually want to see the whole excel sheets because i have them in a different file here i want to see a summary so here's a summary of our hf versus q or uh, whatever you feel is necessary to um, to summarize uh, in your report so your report is concise it doesn't have to have that much detail as the excel sheet the the appendix shows um, so uh, you can include tables of these uh, values. And if you're, so you're solving, let's say you're solving the cubic equation in V graphically, it makes sense to put one of those sample uh, graphical solution methods or plots in this, uh, in your report and show me, this is how I did my, my solution. And uh, that's why this is reasonable. That's why not, that's not reasonable. Uh, so, but make me make it clear enough that I can follow how uh, step by step. Um, so these are the sample calculations and uh, justifications, and then I would like to see your results. So here are your results, which are uh, your plots, and your plots will have captions. So figure one is a description of the whatever the friction head loss with the uh, with the flow rate. So you want to lab label your axis with units and so on. Um, and I'd like you to discuss the trends. Is it going up? Is it going down? And why? And do you feel it's cubic or it's exponential? And how can you just how can you explain that? Is it um, related to the um, energy equation and so on? It must be. But somehow, if you have an idea, a good idea, then write that down uh, when you discuss those plots. Um, okay, so these are the the plots that I have, the three plots that I have mentioned before. Uh, but if you feel that there is one, so these are the absolute minimum. Uh, if you feel your your story, uh, so I'm just giving you a skeleton of what you want to do. Uh, but if you feel there are more, by all means, please include them and. Uh, and discuss them because that will strengthen your report and the worthiness of your report. Okay, so this really concludes our um, take home project number four and concludes um, the lecture material for uh, this semester. And uh, I will see you over. Uh, model. So one last slide, I found some of those over uh, from this um, handbook. So if you need, if you need uh, some extra pipe fittings, uh, they're over here. They're extra. I should have deleted that slide, but I decided to just keep it. Okay, thank you guys, and um, I'll see you later.